Okay, this is LMTV Caterpillar 3116 engine fuel system. All right, so the fuel comes up from the fuel tank up through this hose to this fitting, runs in through the fuel filter, down through a flapper type check valve, and into the filter around the outside. It has to go around a plate, and in, in doing so, any water should be separated and wind up down here. Um, once it goes around this separator plate or baffle plate, it goes through the filter comes up through the middle of the filter and comes out this hose. And this hose comes all the way along right here and goes straight into the lift pump. The lift pump is located right down in here. The fuel comes out of the lift pump up through this elbow, goes around this line down here past this T fitting into the secondary fuel filter. Note that plug right there, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, goes through the fuel filter, the secondary filter comes out, goes through another metal hard line, um, which goes back along the engine and all the way back around to the back of the cylinder head. You see it right down there, that, that line, that hard metal hard line going into the middle of the back of the cylinder head. Flows all the way through the cylinder head, past all the injectors, comes out the front comes up this line here to this block. This block is your fuel pressure regulator. It's a little spring-loaded plunger in there that uh, helps maintain fuel pressure in the head. You have to have a certain amount of fuel pressure in the head for the injectors to function properly. Comes out this elbow and into this hose. This hose here goes all the way back to your fuel tank. Okay, um, got to have fuel in the system for it to work properly. And along that lines, they added this primer bulb assembly. Okay, this primer bulb sucks fuel out of this gallery on the fuel filter right above the uh, right above the check valve, the flapper check valve. Goes through its own little inlet check valve through the bulb as you squeeze it, through an outlet valve, and it dumps down into the into the top of the fuel filter at the back of the filter. And then the fuel would go through the filter, come up through the middle, and come on out there. Uh, when you pump this thing, uh, it should be able to lift fuel from the tank. As you pump it, it should start to get hard very quickly. Uh, like I say, I, I got about three pumps out of mine. Ideally, it should be completely full of fuel, so I might have a little leak somewhere um, in the system that's allowing a little bit of air to intrude, but it should get it should get firm. That means you're moving fuel. If it's easy to pump and you can pump it with your thumb and you just keep pumping and pumping and pumping, um, it's probably not lifting any fuel from the tank. Um, one of two things could go wrong is you have a leak in this assembly somewhere. Um, one of its internal check valves is bad, or this little flapper valve is bad down here. Uh, if this flapper valve doesn't close, um, you'll suck fuel from the, the filter body, fuel or air, up through the primer, and you'll pump it right back down into the filter, and it'll just go in a big loop right here, or a little loop right here, and not, uh, not move any fuel. Another problem you could have if, if you pump it and it won't get firm is uh, you have a vacuum leak somewhere back to the tank. This plumbing has to has to be able to maintain a vacuum in order to lift fuel. It's way easier to suck in air than it is to lift the weight of the fuel. So any kind of leak along that line, um, old cracked lines, um, loose fittings, anything along that pathway back to the tank, uh, and this thing uh, this thing won't lift fuel. So once you pump it and uh, and you start moving fuel, fuel goes through the outlet. Will go all the way up through the lift pump on the governor and go all the way back through to the secondary fuel filter. Um, this plug in here, uh, if you loosen this plug, um, you can pump the primer bulb and any air that's in the system, uh, you'll be able to pump the air through the system and have the air exit here. So you pump the primer bulb until you get fuel here. Once you start getting just fuel here and no air bubbles anymore, um, then you can close this plug and then you keep pumping. Um, the next place to check is up here on the outlet at the fuel pressure regulator. Uh, if you loosen this fitting here um, and continue to pump the primer bulb, you should be able to get fuel out of this fitting here. In fact, you can uh, you can pump enough fuel with the with the primer bulb to actually build almost 10 psi of pressure in the system. Um, another important thing for these things to run is they need baseline fuel pressure provided by that lift pump. Uh, down here on the secondary filter, there's a T. At the bottom of the T, there's normally a plug right here. I've got a little uh, brass adapter that, that reduces it from the, the quarter-inch national pipe thread plug down to an eighth-inch national pipe thread. 
Then I'm using a basic um, mechanical oil pressure gauge available at about any auto parts store. They're usually under 20 bucks. Uh, you can find them some places online for eight or nine bucks. Um, that allows me to check pressure while the engine's cranking. And um, I can actually see pressure in it when I pump the primer bulb. And you can see the primer bulb. It's hard to push. I have to, I actually have to use the palm of my hand to push it. But I can push it up to, it should be 10 PSI. Yeah, so I can pump it up and hold it at almost 10 PSI. Then you'll see it slowly leak back down as the, as the uh, pressure leaks past the goat or the uh, fuel pressure regulator. Um, when you crank the engine, uh, just cranking the engine, you should be able to get 10 PSI on that gauge. Um, because it's hooked right to the outlet of the, uh, um, it's right on the outlet of the, the plunger type lift pump, it's going to pulse. So the needle will flip all over the place. Um, you can put in some sort of restricted orifice. This uh, poly line that comes with the oil pressure gauge is actually fairly soft. In this case, I've just got a C-clamp squeezing it down a little bit to make a restricted orifice um, to get rid of the, the pulsations of the gauge uh, that I see on the needle when I'm uh, when the engine's running. Um, cranking you should have 10 PSI. Uh, it should go up around 15 or 20 with the engine idling and then once you come up off idle it should pretty quickly run up to about uh, to about 60 PSI on the gauge um, with the engine at RPM. Anyway, that's uh, that's pretty much the basics of the Cat 3116 fuel system on the LMTV.